What's up guys? With more and more new technologies, the most important skill for any developer is by far the ability to learn and adapt fast. In this video, I'm gonna give you easy strategies that you can follow in order to learn anything faster and more effectively. These strategies help me learn uh, all the technologies that I'm using nowadays at my startup and it also helped me get an internship at Amazon. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Hey guys, my name is Vadim and welcome to my channel. I consider myself a self-taught developer, uh, even though I had a traditional degree at university, uh, because most of the things uh, that I'm using day-to-day uh, -day are things that I have learned on my own. Throughout these years, I tested a lot of strategies and tools to learn uh, faster and more e uh, efficiently, and some of them worked and some of them failed. I focused a lot of energy into learning how to actually learn faster and more effectively in order to retain the information long term. I remember one particular case where this strategy actually helped me a lot is when I had only one month to prepare for free AWS certifications, which are relatively hard, and I passed all of them into in the same day. So the problem is that for many beginners, learning typically involves uh, watching a tutorial, uh, following a course while taking some notes, or for some reading some theory books. While all these strategies are very good for getting to know the technology or um, the programming language that you intend to, to learn, they are very ineffective when it comes to retaining long, the information long term. Now you watch a video about uh, global state management with Redux and you're saying like, yeah, yeah, of course, I've got it, like it's pretty obvious, isn't it? And after a week you forget everything and get demotivated and think that uh, it's too complicated for you and you're not meant to be a developer or in the best case scenario you just start a new tutorial. Another problem that prevents you from learning new technologies is that you forgot to smash that like button. So take your time and do it now. But on a serious note, if you want to learn faster and retain the information long term, you gotta roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty with the technology that you're learning. This hands down experience is very crucial for your learning journey in any phase of, uh, of a process. In the beginning, when you just get started with a technology or the programming language, you will of course watch some tutorials or follow some courses, uh, but the most important thing during this phase is to actually follow along what the tu uh, tutor is doing and showing you uh, there. The first time it can be just copying step by step everything that the tutor is doing. And after you finish a part, bonus cookies to you if you uh, try again, but this time from memory. Of course, you can go back and watch uh, the video if you get stuck, but try to do as much as possible yourself from what you remember. Extra bonus cookies to you if you uh, then start experimenting with what you learn. Uh, for example, start modifying the solution that, the, that you learned or try it in a different way. Uh, check all the assumptions that you have about the concept you just learned and of course ask a lot of questions. For example, if you watched a tutorial about sorting algorithm and there they showed you how to sort an array ascending, ask yourself, okay, uh, how do you do that with in descending order? And experiment until you uh, get to the solution. And when you have that aha moment, that's when you actually uh, learn and that's when the brain connects all the dots. That's how you retain the information because you don't just memorize it, but you actually understand how it's done. I would highly recommend for you not to spend a lot of time in this step. Uh, and one course is more than enough enough to grasp the concepts and all the fundamentals about the technology or programming language that you're learning. In this step, uh, your main goal is not to master the technology and not to memorize everything by heart, but rather just to get to know basic concepts of it and this will help you Google uh, everything else that you need later on. Move to the next phase as soon as possible and I would recommend it even a bit earlier than you think that you're ready. During the next phase, you'll take everything that you learned during that tutorial or course and you'll use it to create actual projects. Building a real project is very powerful for a couple of reasons. First of all, you'll build a 
freaking application or a website, a game or whatever you're building uh, that you can actually show it to your friends, to your family or publish to the wide uh, audience. This will motivate you because you will see that you're building something tangible that you can share and it will show you how powerful that technology is. Also, when you're building real projects, you will get into a lot of problems. But hey, don't be afraid of them because they will actually help you uh, learn that technology. You will soon understand that uh, everything that you uh, learned from that tutorial or course is just the surface and is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and most of the things that you will need in, in order to build an actual project is things that you have to research yourself and Google yourself. The good news is that most of the time, the problem that you encounter is not something new. And a lot of people already had that problem, solved it and shared it on, on the internet. You just gotta be good at googling it in order to find uh, answers. Because yeah, that's what we uh, developers do best. With project-based learning, you will learn a technology in order to solve a problem not just for the sake of learning it because, I don't know, it's a cool thing to do. Look at everything that you are learning uh, related to programming as a tool, not as a destination. For example, the reason to learn React Native should not be to get into the hybrid mobile development or even better, just because it's cool and, I don't know, your friend John knows it. You should learn it in, all, in order to solve a problem that you're actually passionate, passionate about. Uh, I don't know, for example, saving penguins and you think that the best way to accomplish that is using a mobile application. When the project that you're building or the problem that you're solving has an actual purpose behind it, you will not feel the burden uh, of learning and you will actually have fun uh, in the process. This will make sure that you continue building awesome projects and continue learning new technologies with every new project that you are building and eventually you'll become a successful developer. One trap that many people fall into when using project-based learning is choosing the difficulty of a project that they are gonna build. I see too many times people that have been coding for only one month and they want to build the next uh, Facebook. It's very good to be ambitious, don't get me wrong, but in this situation, you're setting yourself for a big disappointment. Let me better show what I exactly mean by that and how you should make sure to choose the right difficulty of a project in order to uh, continue uh, learning, uh, having fun and not burn out uh, doing so. So guys, let's say that we have a current graph where on x-axis we have uh, your current knowledge and on y-axis we have the difficulty of a project. Let's say that you are just getting started and your current knowledge is here. So the first project that you're gonna build, you want to start it just a bit more difficult than your current knowledge. So let's say it will start here and by the end of a project it will go like this. By the end of a project, your current knowledge will catch up with the difficulty of a project and your knowledge will be uh, around here. The next one, you want to start it as well, just a bit more difficult than your current abilities. So it will go like this, your knowledge will catch up and so on with every new project that you're building. And that's how you make sure that you will continue improving your skills. And this, my friend, uh, is called the flow zone. And when you are in flow, uh, you don't even understand how time passes when you're doing something, when you're learning, because the difficulty of a project is just enough to make you going. Because whenever you start a project which is much higher than your current knowledge, you will stop doing that project because it's too difficult and this is the anxiety zone. And the same goes whenever you start a project which is less difficult than your current knowledge and if you start it here you will lose interest because it's gonna be too easy for you and it's gonna be boring and this is the boredom zone so guys try to avoid the, the boredom and the anxiety zone and strive to always be in that flow zone where uh, you enjoy learning and you will always improve and get better uh, day by day that's it for today guys start building and stay consistent with it and eventually you will master the technologies that you're learning and also never stop learning because our industry is moving so fast and while we are talking here on this video, I'm pretty sure like three other JavaScript frameworks uh, has been released. 
And if we want to be relevant in uh, the next five years, we should always keep learning. And if you're looking for project-based tutorials, join me live every Friday where we clone uh, application that you probably use every day such as Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, TikTok and others. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel because I am planning to publish even more fire content in 2021. Let me know down below what other tools are you using to learn faster and more effectively. And as always guys, take care, stay hydrated and write clean code. Bye bye.